Uh, Reggie Miller, he lives on the water in Malibu, uh, Hall of Famer there. Have you seen sharks there? Do you, what's your uh, water policy, Reg? Uh, until a shark actually walks on land and takes a bite out of me, I'm not going to go into his territory. And I agree with, with uh, Fritzy. I wonder if the shark actually knows if it's an accidental <laughs> tip over from the boat or, hey, let's get these cool Instagram pictures with this great white shark. Because the shark would be like, are you serious? You want Instagram pictures? All right, come a little bit closer. Come here. Come here. Wait, but you live in Malibu, but you don't go in the water? No. <laughs> too, number one is too cold. And no, I, 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 that's a whole n- another world. I don't. Now, a lot of people have tried. Laird Hamilton took me paddle boarding once, and I was, I feared for my life. <laughs> I feared for my life because he's like the real life Aquaman. He can do, yeah. you know, he speaks to dolphins and sharks and whales <laughs> and all that. And he's like, hey, you paddle like this and, and just breathe, and you feel with one of the nation. And I'm like trying to hold on for dear life. Like, the balance and all that and he's just like oh this he's doing it with one foot out he's holding it the oar i'm like dude get me back to land but you're always on your mountain bike have you ever encountered any animals other than rattlesnakes and one mountain lion but i saw the mountain lion from a distance and turned around quickly (laughs) very quickly but you always hop rattlesnakes all the time you're always hopping rattlesnakes yeah, but you don't look like a meal to a mountain lion, though, Reg. You don't think I would? <laughs> no, no. I don't what? think. I don't think. I think I would be a delicious six, seven meal for a mountain lion. If, if you're going to ride, I'd ride next to Oliver Miller. <laughs> oh, that's the Miller time yeah. that the mountain lion yeah. would be looking for. Yeah. Not Reggie Miller, but no, Oliver, Oliver Miller. Oliver Miller. Um, and the USA lost to Nigeria in a friendly basketball game. Is this a big deal, Reg, for our Olympic team? I'm not ready to jump off the cliff quite yet. It's only alarming because when the team was assembled, I, I looked at the roster, and the first thing I said to myself, there's not a lot of size. Yeah, yeah. And Well, isn't Draymond a center? He, him and Bam, I, I guess, are the centers on this team. They yeah. have a lot of wing players, a lot of guard play. Again, that's the way the game is trending towards. But I, I look at, I don't know what bigs we really could have added for, for size. Most of the true big men are international players. Joel Embiid, Jokic, even DeAndre Ayton, who's playing fantastic. Uh, for Phoenix in this series is from the Bahamas. So I don't know if we really had a lot of size. I'm not that alarmed. It, Nigeria? I mean, wait, <laughs> what happens when you play France or Spain yeah. or Argentina? Teams that are well-versed in international play, I, I've got to see a little bit more. Even Australia. I know they have an exhibition game with Australia coming up. Australia has some NBA players and talent, so we'll just have to wait and see. Well, we had Michael Wilbon on in the first hour, and he said the All-Star game should be the U.S. against the world. And and there would be true pride there, certainly for the world to try to beat the United States. You could build a pretty, you could have a pretty good roster of the world versus the U.S. What do you think of that idea? I love it, and I think at some point, I think it's trending that way. And I think um, Adam Silver has looked into that. Um, I think it would be fantastic. And it's almost safe to say we may be the underdogs. I'm not saying yeah. we wouldn't win, but we very well could be the underdogs if, if that game was to shape out with today's players, because they would certainly have the size. I know we would have LeBron and Katie, Harden, Kyrie, Steph. I mean, we would be loaded, but so would they. They'd have some big men, that's for sure. You throw in Luca in there as well. You got players from Canada. I mean, you could you could build a pretty good roster, but I'd love that it would mean something. Because I think when we watch and it's you know, it's just up and down, it's a 
an and one game where you're just having fun and dunking, which if, if that's what fans want, then I'm fine with that. The fans should have, have a, you know, dis, you know, be able to decide this, what they want to watch. But I think you could get that us against them, that pride a little bit, unless the commissioner doesn't want it to be divisive where it, it feels like we're pitting, you know, us against them and there is some kind of separation well, why there. not why not bring out some juices though oh i know, you know why, I'm, why I'm, not bring out that competitive spirit um i'm sure there's trash talking that goes on with guys you know between jamal murray who's canadian he would probably be on that world team yeah along with Jokic. i mean why not you know have some some competitive spirit going on i, I think it would be great when the suns went up 2-0 you thought they did what they had to do. They held home court. Did you think it was court. over? No. Okay. Because Milwaukee plays obviously very well at home. Two things, though, that have emerged to be very clear in this series. Number one, they have zero answer for Giannis Antetokounmpo, whether it's DeAndre Ayton and his size trying to guard him. They downgraded and, and uh, put Jay Crowder on him, Mikael Bridges. It doesn't matter. His size, his offensive rebounding, and now that he's starting to hit free throws, last night was his, his best uh, trek to the free throw line. They have no answer for him. And number two, when Chris Middleton and Drew Holiday play reasonable, this Milwaukee Bucks team is very difficult to beat. But when Phoenix went up 2 nothing, they did what they had to do. They held home court. Now Milwaukee is one game away from doing the same thing. At some point in time, Milwaukee obviously has to win a road game to win an NBA championship. I was more impressed that they put something on the mind of Phoenix now because they blew them out. And it was, I mean, they just ran them out the gym, especially in that third quarter. So game four, we'll see if, uh, Devin Booker is not gonna score 10 points and shoot that terrible. So. He'll have a balanced bad game, but game four is everything. That will tell me everything about this series. I still watch Giannis, and I was talking to Wilbon about this, that why can't I just have him do what he's great at doing? Not, mm-hmm. not the other stuff where he's, he's not even good at taking three-point shots. And, and I don't want him dribbling the ball up the floor. If he dribbles up the floor, I can build a wall there. If I put him down low, now you got to decide. You want to double him, and that's where I got Lopez, Holiday, and Chris Middleton. And it's, a, it's incumbent upon them to hit those shots. But you can't guard the Greek freak down low with one person. And, and I can get you in foul trouble. He's going to get to the hoop. That's, that's what I want. You know, Shaq, I never said, boy, you've got to hit some jumpers. Or, you know, Kareem, you've got to come out to uh, the free throw line. Like, I never said any of it. I just thought, man... That's, they're unstoppable. That's what I want them to continue to do. Why is it that Mike Budenholzer still has the Greek freak out on the perimeter? Well, I, I will say this. I, I wouldn't take away him not bringing the ball up because in the open court, when he gets ahead of steam, very difficult to stop, especially with that Euro step. So you don't want to take away that part of the I'm game. okay in transition, Reg. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. I, I will say... The thing about the three-point shots, and it kills me, you and I have talked about this for the last two months during the playoffs. If he's going to settle for threes, they're going to lose. They're going to lose the NBA championship. To me, they're dare shots that teams give him. Make up the difference. I don't care if they're giving me dare shots. Make up the difference and then go into what you're alluding to, the spin move, one dribble, and you're at the rim, or you're finding your shooters. And we saw that really in these first three games um, versus Phoenix. I I think in game one, he wasn't sure. He was still worried about the hyperextension uh, of the knee. He he wasn't playing the game instinctual. Which people aren't factoring in what he's been able to do with an injury that I had. Channing Frye told me, he said, I had the same thing. I don't think he plays again. He said, it took me six weeks to recover from that. Greek freak, you know, yeah. uh, he, he men's remarkable and how he's finishing too, because the moves are crisp. They're clean, they're decisive. And you're right. 
it, Monty Williams is going to have to make a decision of doubling. But when you double, Coach Budenholzer loves – they love the three ball. They average 43s a game. They haven't shot them great, yeah. but they love shooting them. And at some point in time, they're going to start making them, Dan. And if you're Phoenix, the problem is if this series ends up 2-2, game five, on the road, it's one of those games where you think everything is going to start clicking for Milwaukee. I still like Phoenix. I had Phoenix winning in seven. But I think this is going to go the distance. I think Milwaukee wins tomorrow. And, again, all Phoenix has to do is win home games, and they win it all. Yeah. So I think it's a seven-game series. It's going to go the distance. Both of these teams are well-matched, but zero answer for Giannis. And if Holiday and if Middleton contributes a little bit, then Milwaukee will win a championship. I was talking to Wilbon about this as well, that, you know, we look at the Lakers and somehow we want to always put the best player on the Lakers. Like LeBron's going to get uh, Damian Lillard. And then I always say, but who's Portland getting in return? Right. And, you know, Wilbon said, you know, you're right, but there's this, would you trade Anthony Davis for Damian Lillard? If you were the Lakers? No, 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 absolutely not. As, as much as I love, uh, Damian Lillard, Lillard has to have the ball in his hands to be successful. That's what made him great. Yep. Great isolation, one-on-one, high pick-and-roll player. For LeBron, what he's done throughout his career, needs the ball to be successful. I don't think they would play well off of one another. I, I just don't. And I think that's why Anthony Davis is a perfect complement, if he can stay healthy, I know. to LeBron. Okay, so then if you're the Lakers. I, I will say this. You know who would be better on that team? C.J. McCollum yeah. would be great on the Lakers with LeBron. Okay, so how do you get him? Do you do a sign-and-trade with Dennis Schroeder? Yes, I would get rid of Schroeder, and I would possibly think about getting rid of Kyle, Kyle Kuzma. Kuzma. I, I got, would. I got I would no keep problem. David Horton Tucker. I like, I like him. I would, I would break Caruso out of jail in Texas and get him back. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, I would get rid of Schroeder and, and Kuzma for C.J. McCollum. I would. Is, I think he would be perfect for the Lakers. I'm, I don't know if Kuzma wants to be great. Like, you can get caught up in the trappings of being in Hollywood. And we talked about this with the younger guys when LeBron wanted those guys out. Like, you kind of get caught up in I'm a Laker and the lifestyle and – you know, like Ingr- I, don't, I don't, I don't sense that from Caruso. I, I oh think no, not Caruso, Kuzma. Oh, yeah. Kuz- I, I think he's caught up. I yeah, think he's you know, you up. got your hair blonde, and you yeah. know, you're dating a Kardashian or something. And I, I think he, as much as I love, I love Kyle. His rookie year, I thought he played fantastic. Yes, I think he got. I think he got caught up. Yeah, he got up in the lifestyle. Now he has a ring. But it felt like. Ingram needed to get out because of his personality. And and even, you know, Lonzo Ball, like the personality, sometimes you wonder, like you got to yeah. be ready for L.A. And, and, you know, and I wonder some of these, well, you've seen, like, could Tim Duncan, other than San Antonio, like it just felt like that's where Tim Duncan was supposed to be. Or David Robin, like there's certain guys you just go, their personality fits that city and vice versa. I, I agree. and. Look, Kyle Kuzma is a great player. He thinks he could be a double-double type guy. I'm not saying he can't, but he had plenty of opportunity to be really an all-NBA type player when LeBron was gone for those 30-something games as well as AD. He had a chance. Yeah. He, he really had an opportunity, and he didn't deliver. I'm not saying he can't, but you had an opportunity. But LeBron can stunt your growth, too, because you're not quite sure, what am I allowed to do? I mean, not to the extent like with Michael Jordan, but, you know, when, when you're there with LeBron, it, it's like, how do no, I... No, it's called expectations. He can't raise his expectations playing with a long a generational type player. No. LeBron, LeBron elevates God. Think about some of the teams that LeBron took to the finals in Cleveland. Like, where are these guys now? So he's not stunting Kyle Kuzma. Booby Gibson was a starting point guard. <laughs> Come on, man. Did he stun his? Wait, his uh, Eric Snow. Come on, man. No. 
Uh, did you hear Jamal Mashburn's story about Larry Bird? No. He he was. They were. Um, this is when the college guys were playing against the Dream Team. So it's okay. Weber and Rodney Rogers, and and Mash was telling the story that Rodney Rogers is given Bird grief. You know that you know you haven't been anything since 1984. And and this is after I think they beat them in in one of the scrimmages and they were the first scrimmage, right? Yeah, and 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 so Bird, Bird checks into the game in the next one, and Mashburn was telling the story that Rodney Rogers was guarding him and Magic gave him the ball like eight times in a row, and, and Larry is telling him where he's going to shoot, and then I think he made the last one. He goes, yeah, just like 1984. <laughs> and, and, and Weber said, Chris Weber said it was an assassination of Rodney Rogers. And, you know, Rodney loved to talk, but when hearing Mashburn tell the story, it was really funny, you know? That's, hey, that's Larry Rogers <laughs> at his finest. Because not only was he doing that against, you know, Rogers, who at the time was a, you know, a college player, he was doing that to Chuck Person during a playoff game. I'm gonna I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna shoot this <laughs> shot. I'm gonna fade away. I'm gonna make it with my left. Next time I come down, I'm gonna do it with my right. I just watch my footwork. Chuck, hey Chuck, watch my footwork now. Okay. And, and then Weber <laughs> said legend. that Bird would get mad whenever there was a white guy guarding him. Like he would get so <laughs> mad that there, there's not a white guy on, on the planet can guard me. And he would get so angry when somebody like Marley, when Dan Marley. I think uh, he wouldn't re he wouldn't talk to Dan Marley because he was a rookie. He refused to talk to Dan Marley. And he would talk to like Andrew Lang or somebody and say, you send the message to Dan Marley. He said I, that he wouldn't he wouldn't. And Marley said he wouldn't talk to me because I was a rookie. Love it. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Um, let's see. So you got the Suns in seven. All right. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Not bad. What do you got? I think, I think Chris Paul, Devin Booker. Other than last night, because Chris Paul played pretty well in the first half. I, I think the guard play has been fantastic for Phoenix. And Booker is not going to shoot that bad, score 10 points. I think he'll have a bounce back game. But until they find an answer for that Greek free. They won't have an answer for him. They don't. If they have to have answers for Holiday and Middleton that those guys can't get off. And if they do, with the Greek freak doing what he does, I mean, he's... These are, oh, by the way, 40, 40 point, 10 rebound games. And easy, too. Easy. I know. I mean, he's getting them. Everything is just about in the paint. But you're right. Because of the inconsistency of Middleton and Holiday, which we've seen. I know. If they can't be consistent, Phoenix is going to win this series. If they're consistent, Milwaukee can come back and win this. And winning one on the road. Thank you, Reg. Great to talk to you. Theodore, I love you. I love my dad, Nats. Hey, sorry. Hey, give well wishes to your brother, man. I mean, fly fishing. Who knew that was such a, a combat sport, man? No, oh, no. I, I, I know. Well, man. I know. I put the fly in fly fishing. Okay. I mean, next time, pad up. Bring some pads. <laughs> yeah. A helmet. That would help. A helmet. We were going to buy my brother a helmet that you give to a little kid when they're first learning to ride a bike, just so yes. he'd go fly fishing in case he flew out of the boat again. <laughs> Thank you, Reg. You're the best, Theodore. All right, we'll take a break. Last call for phone calls. What we learn, what's in store tomorrow after this.